right. So we are going to be talking today about sliding into summer learning with Bright Reader. Um, and we are super excited to be here today to share uh, some ways that we have or will be using Write Reader during the summer months to continue to help and support our students with those language and literacy skills. So my name is Katie Hunter. I'm an elementary English as a second language teacher in Salisbury, North Carolina. Um, and and I'm Katie Boston, but we're gonna go by Catherine just to make it a little bit simpler here today. Um, and I am a middle school ESL teacher in Salisbury, North Carolina. And uh, we set up some goals for today. So what we're hoping to accomplish is to show you how to integrate Write Reader into your summer learning programs, as well as looking at the different tools and features that can help support your students um, with their literacy over the summer and their skills and then just share some other ways that you can use it with your students. So we're pretty excited to give you ideas and ways to keep our students learning. All right, so I'm gonna start off with talking about how I have used Write Reader um, in some of my different summer school programs and ESL summer camps. Then after I share some experiences I've had using Write Reader during the summer, uh, Katie will follow up with how she plans to use it this year or this summer with her middle school ESL students for more of an independent practice. All right, so getting started, um, I'm just going to kind of first start off with how I started to plan and use Write Reader during our English as a Second Language summer learning camp um, and summer learning program. This was about a two week summer camp for ESL students during our summer months. And the thing I really love about summer school or summer learning programs is kind of the freedom and flexibility we have as educators to, to pick a fun theme, really get creative with our, our summer school standards or programs um, with the students during this learning time. So I began by picking a theme or a summer school standard. Um, the experience I'm gonna be sharing is with kindergarten I use the fairy tale theme. Um, we were reading fairy tales, talking about fairy tales, and kind of integrating those language arts and literacy standards of story elements, retelling and sequencing events. Um, and then I'm going to be sharing also an example of how I used Write Reader with a really fun unit of video games. And this was with fourth grade ESL students. Um, so this is a really fun kind of unit or theme of study that we we're able to easily integrate Write Reader um, into this unit of study to practice our language and literacy skills. So after I picked my theme that we were gonna focus on during these summer school months, I was able to search the image bank. And I'll share a little bit about this in a minute, but one of the things I love about Write Reader is this really rich image bank, preloaded image bank that the program has to offer. Um, so I was able to search the image bank and find some preloaded images that would really complement or go well with our fun units or themes of study. After this, I created a template with lots of scaffolding and supports for my students. Um, and I'll be sharing how I did that. And then at the end, students were able to share and showcase their work. And once again, Write Reader really provides a lot of fun, really easy to use opportunities for students and educators to share and showcase our completed digital books. All right, so briefly, I just want to go over, um, if you're new to Write Reader, kind of setting up your class and also another feature called the template library. We'll just briefly talk about these uh, before I share how I used it in my class with our fairy tale and video games units of study. As an educator, once you set up your class, and once again, Write Reader is a web-based program, which I love. It makes it really easy and accessible for students in any kind of learning environment with really any kind of device. There's no downloading an app. They can just, it's a web-based, so they can really sign on and use it anywhere, which makes it really nice and really easy to use for educators and for students. Once you set up your class, you can then choose down here, you will see on the left side, different kinds of page layouts. I personally always have used the image student text and educator text. And I'll share a little bit about how that educator text 
really helped me when I was creating those supports in my template. You can also turn on the search in image search Pixabay, which Katie will be talking about a little bit later, that fun feature. And then you can also turn on the tab where students will be able to see each other's books. And I'll be talking about that when we talk about the student share and showcase. Now, if you didn't wanna set up or create your own template to share with your students, you can search the template library. This is really nice and really convenient for educators who might be low on time or just um, new to the Write Reader program. So you can search by grade level, by subject, some pre-made templates that you can use and immediately share with your students or use and kind of tailor them to your students' needs. Once you've started, um, this is the edit view. This is what students and educators will see once they begin to create their books. I just wanted to show this quickly as here at the top where the blue arrow is pointing, I always make sure the link sharing tab is on. I'll talk about this um, a little bit later when we talk about our student share and showcase. Uh, this is a very important feature that I have turned on as well as the template feature turned on. So this is how once I create my template, I will be sharing it with my students. All right, so going back to that image bank, one of my favorite features of Write Reader. So up at the top, you'll see kind of different categories of images that you can search. These are already uploaded to the Write Reader program. And I was able to find a fairy tale image bank um, and one a mine, Minecraft image bank, which went perfectly with our video game unit of study. Um, so students, as they completed their books about video games, they were able to search that Minecraft image bank and find images to add to their books. And with our fairy tale image bank, they actually served as more of kind of a writing prompt. So students choosing the images as they created their own fairy tales and using those picture prompts to help them and guide them in their writing. Now I'd like to share how I use the templates to kind of scaffold and support my students. There's many different ways you can use the templates in Write Reader to create different prompts and scaffolds and supports. Um, you'll see different ways that the templates have been used and that the features in the template have been used. Um, if you search the template library, this is how I used it to support my students because I wanted to make sure that all students of all levels could complete their digital books. Down at the bottom where I call it the Big Al um, or the educator text box is where I put my question prompts. This is the template for our fourth grade ESL uh, video game unit of study. Students were asked to kind of think about video games. That's something fun that they all play, we can all relate to, um, and talked about how we could use video games in school. How could we use it to help us learn English? Um, what is your favorite video game and why? So there were lots of questions I wanted students to answer when they created their books about video games. In the Big Al or the Educator text box, I was able to put these prompts or questions for students to answer above in the student text box or beside the Baby Al, as I call it in class. Now, I do have some students that might need a little extra help reading some of those prompting questions. So in comes the speech synth synthesis button. This was really great because students were able to push the speech synthesis button and hear that prompt or question read aloud to them. This helped them when answering those questions. Now, some of my students still needed a little extra support. So I provided sentence stems or sentence starters for them to use when completing the page. If they click on the comments tab or button, up pops a sentence stem for them to use when they begin to write their text. So I have the question prompt, they can hear the question read aloud with the speech synthesis, and then they're also able to access a sentence starter or a sentence stem to answer the question in their writing. So I have all these different kind of prompts and supports in this one really easy to use template. 
And this was great because once I was able to share and guide students on how to use these different supports and scaffolding features, they were able to complete their books independently as I facilitated around the room, helping or answering any questions, or they could complete them during hybrid or virtual learning at home. If they didn't have support from somebody at home to help them with the language, they were able to listen to it, have the sentence starters, and, and really complete the task no matter what their level or proficiency was. So here's the student view. Once I created my template, when students log in using their login ID and the class code, they're going to click on the white plus and they'll see the um, template above it. They'll click on the template and then up pops the template to their library. So this is what they would see in that blue box on their, their page in Write Reader for them to begin working on creating their digital book. Now, another way to use the educator text box as a support with my uh, fairy tale books was to provide a word bank for students to use. Once again, this is with kindergarten and first grade ESL students. So providing them with this word bank in the educator text box really supported them when creating their own fairy tales using those image bank pictures as a writing prompt. This is what it looked like once students' books were complete. Um, so here you could have with the making meaning of video games with our fourth graders, you could keep the guiding questions on the page. Um, so once students completed the book, this is what a finished product would look like. Or you could erase it or, or um, hide the educator text prompts so only the student's educator text box appears, such as in the uh, Pretty Prince fairy tale book over on the right hand side. Once students completed their book, it was time to share and showcase our work. They were really excited to have created a book um, of their own that they wrote. They are able to read it and really took ownership and were proud of their work. And the thing I love about Write Reader is there's so many different ways to share and showcase our work. With the fairy tales, um, I was able to download and print and give students a hard copy of these fairy tale books they created. We then um, dressed up in our pretty princess dresses and knight in shining armor costumes. And we had a showcase for other uh, students and parents to come walking through the room as we read our fairy tales aloud. Um, and it was really a great experience. For the fourth grade students, going back to that, creating the shareable book link, um, this is something that you can copy and paste the link and put into Seesaw. Uh, for students to have a digital copy to share with others or parents through the Seesaw Family Connect feature. And right there, uh, once again, in the settings where you have children can see each other's books, if you turn that tab on, this also allows students to see each other's books in um, the Write Reader website, so you could have a virtual book fair. Um, if you would like to share and showcase students work that way as well. And then up here at the top, you'll see um, the fourth grade teachers had a room transformation where they transformed their rooms into uh, video games uh, like environments. So this was really fun um, and a great opportunity for students to share their work in more of a digital um, online book fair type environment. So just two different ways that students can um, just share something that they're really proud of and have created during a fun learning time. And now we will hear from Katie. Okay, so as the slide changes here, um, I used this more for independent practice and to get my students involved in writing. Um, so I'm gonna go through and show you what I've started this year. I'm excited about. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see how many of my kids will keep up with a uh, summer journal as we go through. So with the summer journal, I had our slides are lagging just a little bit, but bear with us. <laughs> um, as you see here, this is actually an image of my screen of students who have already started their summer journals. 
And so as Katie stated before, I kind of first went through what kind of template do I want them to have to get them started. Um, and then I was really pushing them to use the camera feature so I could have real images of what they were doing and seeing. Um, and then a dialogue. So I was using that um, comments button to, cre to create the dialogue for me to the students. So when I was setting up my template, I first want to think about all the things that I could give them some ideas to start with. Because again, I'm working with middle schoolers. And so it's always, I don't know what to write or I don't want to, you know, you have all those excuses. So I came up with a couple ideas I wanted them to think about um, to get us going. So I came up with just your daily activities. You can tell me what you're doing daily. If you go on a vacation, where did you go? Um, what kind of photos did you take? What are some things that you've seen? And what are some things that you've experienced? Because an experience can be anything that you'd want to share with us. Now, motivation for the summer and middle schoolers. I immediately turned on the shared book feature. So if they're creating their book, they have a chance to be able to see their friends' books and my book as well. So I promised that I would be creating a journal for them to read too. My template was pretty simple. When you go to the page template, as Katie showed, I turned off the big owl, little owl feature, as she calls it. Um, because with my middle schoolers, what I was wanting is I wanted full pages of writing or a picture in writing. So I just went ahead to put the prompt straight up on the page just to start off with like, what is your summer plan? That's the one thing you can do for me right now so you have your book started. And then you can add pages as you go. So they had the freedom to be able to pick between those two pages as we go through. And then using the upload feature, and the camera feature, I shared with them different ways to get some fun photos in there. So I used the upload feature in this little example here to put my Bitmoji out there in the summer sun ready to go. Um, so it's really simple to use because, I mean, you just hit the button and then go ahead and find it. You can find it in your, um, in your drop down menu or you can drag and drop. So depending on what kind of picture you want to put in there. We've all been using it for other features, so this is just great that we can put in there anything that we want to. And then, of course, we have the photo feature. So there I am just cheesing it up um, in front of my laptop. And what's really neat is it just depends on which device you're using. So with my laptop, of course, it's just a face forward picture, but I could have used my phone or my iPad and I can do a turned around picture. So it gives you the options, just like you're working with your phone, taking pictures to add in there. Um, so I challenged them to find some really cool pictures, especially if they go on vacation, so they could kind of take us on vacation with them. And here is my friend, Jonathan, um, who has used his mask to cover his face. Um, and he is actually on his cell phone in my classroom the last couple of days of school and logged in to start his own summer journal. So he said, look, Ms. Boston, I'm going to do it. I'm on here. I said, okay, prove it. So he pulled it up and showed me he's got it started. Um, and that's like, again, like Katie said, the best thing is they can do it in, on any kind of device. So my kids are like, we had to give up our iPads for the summer. Last year they had them, this year they don't. And so I was like, every single one of you have a cell phone in here. Almost every single one of you have a cell phone. And if not, your parents do. So when you're at home at night, you can add stuff to it. Um, so I thought that was just great. So there's my almost high schooler there. And then this is an actual um, sample of a student who's already got started. So um, Kazim, had started his book and he went and actually used the search feature for his cover. He said, until he goes to the beach, he wanted a beach picture there. So that's his cover picture. And then he's already started his summer plan. Um, so he has four sentences there telling me what he's hoping to accomplish. And then I use the comment button there where you can see the little um, red dot to tell him that I've read it and basically challenged him to tell me more, especially about his holiday that he's talking about he'll celebrate this summer because I'd like to learn more about it. So I'm hoping to use that comment feature as the dialogue just to keep my students interested and going and talking as they go through. 
And then I can sneak in a couple things like, mm, you forgot your period at the end, or could we use another word? Can you come up with a word that's better than beautiful? You know, so I can still pull in those extra language pieces by having that dialogue with them and keep it fun. And another great feature is the fact that that red one circle is there because when my students open their book, it should, when they open their bookshelf, they'll see their book and it'll have a red one circle. That means, uh-oh, my teacher's told me something. She's looked at it. She knows what's going on. So um, I love that fact to tell them, just look for that circle. And if it's popped up, that means I've read it. And I promise I'll read it at least once, most of the time, twice a week. I'll be checking in as they're adding stuff. 